What I'm excited about is creating a narrative and characters with voices that uh, people around the world can relate to. Fundamentally, it doesn't matter if you've got great looking characters, if you don't actually care about them and engage with them and connect with their journey and want to root for them, then you failed. In combination with Skybound, it's all about giving the creators of the story a big canvas to be able to tell bigger, better, more exciting, interconnected stories. Just a couple of months ago, we had our first Seminars War writer's room. And we brought in specialists who wrote graphic novels and wrote novels and wrote television uh, and wrote feature films and talked with them and worked with them and spitballed the ideas and really kind of came to a place where we said, okay, now we have a whole universe and we know how that universe fits on a timeline. But more than that, we know where there's good stories to tell in each of these individual mediums. In the case of Sumner's War, these characters have all lived in the game but have never spoken before. So you kind of have to get to the core of what makes this um, Sumner's War unique, what they love about it, hold on to that. The game is actually incredibly thematically rich. So we saw, you know, we saw it was both a hero's journey game, um, a story about people part of a team and loyalty. There were all these intimate, uh, you know, thematic threads that resonated with us. And we we're like, the combination of this deeply personal story in this giant world made us really excited. When we adapted Angry Birds, we were very strategic. There was a huge universe of characters from which we identified a core group. We spent a lot of time dimensionalizing them, and that worked. And so we took the same approach when it came to Sumner's War. Looking at the, the different art styles and kind of tying it in with what I already know uh, about the history and background of these characters, you know, it's it's. It's a good experience, it's a fun experience. In a game where you're basically the character, we're seeing the gameplay through your point of view, you look for ways in that include things like uh, key characters, key NPCs that you might be interacting with. Undoubtedly, we are looking at an ensemble cast of characters. I would love to see that we can continue to expand those characters and dig in and out of various storylines. So we had Durand and we had Elheil, which were two main characters that we could look at. Duran pretty much had to be part of the picture because when you play the game, he's the person that you aspire to be. He's the person that sees some potential in you. So it's a natural uh, progression for people who have played the game to be brought into the world with Duran. And then also Duran's character, that kind of brash, confident, but also you know, successful summoner, is a good entry point into the world. We really talked about, okay, what is the moment of um, how does a summoner summon a, a, a monster? What's the relationship between them? And how do you kind of boil it down to a signature visual moment? We really kind of put a lot of thought into that. To me, all creativity is emotion. You have to start from what is going to be emotionally impactful to that player, to that viewer, to that reader. You have to start there. The evolution of, of how monsters relate to the summoners and how the summoners relate to the monsters really sits at the core of the property. Some summoners treat their monsters with respect. They build lifelong relationships with those monsters and there's a trust bond that develops between monster and summoner. Uh, other summoners might look at those monsters as being almost like an asset or a weapon. Every day for me it's like, what's going to be next? What's going to be new? Um, and that, that really is just, it's exciting.